Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, I wanted to talk to you about how I decide whether or not a swim location is safe enough for me to get into on a particular day. The first thing I do before I go to any location is I check out what the weather's up to and I think about what's been going on recently. And then when I get there, there's kind of like a mini risk assessment which I do, which I wanted to kind of walk you through. So the first thing I'm interested in is the flow rate to see what's going on with the water. I also want to know uh, what the wind direction is. I want to know where I could get changed, whether or not I can get in and out easily and what the risk of injury is, as well as whether or not there's any traffic and what the water quality is like. So let's dive into those and uh, get a bit more detail. Now, wherever I've chosen to go for my swim, I'm interested to know what the flow rate is. Not scientifically, I don't really want to know the numbers, although that might be interesting. I want to know uh, what it's doing, what the water's doing at the point I'm thinking of getting in and where I'm thinking of getting out. So I tend to look for clues. While I'm standing on the side, uh, I might look at structures which are in the water. So there might be a bridge stanchion in the water. There may be, I don't know if you can see them from here, but there's some posts out here uh, which mark the edge of the shipping channel. Um, and I, I'm looking there to see if there is a buildup of water on one side where the water is rushing past it and pushing onto it, meaning that where there's at least deep water, it's flowing pretty quickly. The other thing I do is I'll look in the water to see if there's any debris moving around to see if I can see seaweed or any bits of vegetation that are moving with the flow, because that will also tell me what's going on, either direction or the speed at the surface. Now it's important to remember that when we're talking about flow, it's generally going to be faster at places like bends in rivers on the outside of the bend, on headlands as the water comes around it, and in estuaries or anywhere where the water is constricted and there's a flow. So it will be speedy there and in deep water. Where it's next to the beach and it's nice and shallow, there tends to be not too much flow going on. So with that information to hand, what I'm trying to figure out is, can I either swim against it? I always swim against any current that's there first to make sure that I'm not too tired to get back. Or if I can't swim against it, can I have a little swish and can I go with it? What's the exit gonna look like? And is it going in the direction that I want to go? The next thing I'm thinking about is, are there any obstacles? Is there a risk of injury where I'm thinking of getting in or getting out? Are there logs or lumps of rock or concrete if I'm in a river? Is there any kind of a structure that I might bump into? So I'm taking a good look around to see, is there anything that I might not, you know, that I could be bumping into? So at high water, you can see the, um, uh, the groins so that are put in there for um, beach management. Will some of that be submersed? Could I end up bumping into that if I don't look out? I've definitely swum into an underwater pipe before without realising it was there. But had I looked up, on the side there was a post, um, a tall post with a yellow X on the top, meaning there's something underwater, an underwater obstruction. Had I noticed that, I wouldn't have got a uh, big barnacle scrape off it. So just being aware of what's around, what you're getting into. And uh, my top tip for that is that I always have something on my feet if I'm going somewhere where there could be anything. In fact, I pretty much always have something on my feet. I do like the feeling of the, of the water on my toes, but uh, I value the undersoles, of the, the soles of my feet too much to, um, to walk into an unknown bit of water barefoot. The other thing I'm also looking out for is whether it's a, a beauty spot and whether there are, um, whether there's evidence of partying and, and that sort of thing. And there might therefore be sadly broken glass or some other rubbish that could be just in the, uh, in the shoreline. And also people who haven't put out any uh, fires they've had particularly well, that can still scold your feet hours and hours afterwards. In a river situation, in terms of things that could also injure you, I'm looking for any trees or bushes which are hanging into the water, where the water's flowing through them, kind of like a colander, and you could get caught on the other side of it, and it's then very difficult to get off, and that is an extreme risk. I wouldn't go swimming anywhere near any vegetation that's sticking into the water for fear of getting stuck onto it and held there by the water. 
Something else I'm really very aware of is whether or not there's traffic in the swim area. And so here I'm looking out over at the little shipping channel where there are quite a few leisure boats going up and down and it seems pretty busy. And equally, if you're on a river somewhere and there's any form of traffic, having a look to see, is there space for me to get in and swim safely? So when we're swimming there, we're looking at staying at the edges. I certainly wouldn't go trying to cross over um, a channel where there are boats going up and down, if at all possible. I'd stick to one side and stick in close to the edge so that, uh, uh, so that I can keep out of its way. And even if it doesn't see me, it shouldn't be so much of a problem. However, to help me be seen, I will be using a tow float and wearing a bright hat. That way I'm doing my utmost to make sure other people can see me and we can all have a nice day out in the water. The next thing I like to think about is my entry and exit point. It's absolutely critical for me that it's easy to get in and um, easy to get out. I'm not going to injure myself or have to really put in a mass load of energy to get myself back out of the water. So I won't get in unless I know how I'm going to get out. I'll take a look along the shoreline. I'll sometimes walk the whole length of the uh, swim I'm thinking of doing just to make sure I can see in an emergency how am I going to get out the water. It's really important for me to know that I can get out at any point. So I take in my tow float, my um, changing robe, my mobile phone, and I've already got footwear. So wherever I am, I can hop out and I can walk if the going gets tough in the water. It might seem odd that I've left water quality until this point, but before I've even reached the swim spot, I've been thinking about what the weather's been doing recently. I pay attention to what's going on and whether or not there's been some heavy rainfall. So things that affect the water quality then, heavy rainfall can, uh, can induce water runoff through the field. So anything, any uh, animal effluent and any chemicals that have been used in farming. Also, if there's been particularly heavy rainfall, then the sewage system can get overwhelmed and we can end up with that flowing straight into our rivers and the sea. So I look for clues when I get there. I'll look in the water if it's near to an industrial site, for example. Then I'll look to see if there's anything in the water uh, floating on the top, like uh, a shiny substance. Things like diesel will show up like that. I've also have a good sniff. If it doesn't look right and it doesn't smell right, I won't get in. But I do also check a couple of websites if I'm unsure about what it's been doing recently. And I'll link those in the description below. But basically they're the ones from the Surfers Against Sewage, which are all around the coast, but they are, some of them are seasonal, so it doesn't always show the true information at the time. And then I'll also look at the Environment Agency if I'm heading into a river. But in general, if it's been heavy rainfall, then I won't swim in the rivers or the sea for a good couple of days, just to give it all chance to uh, at least dilute. Now, I know this video is about safety of a swim, but for me, the safety of a swim isn't just about the getting into and out of and being in the water. It's also about how safe I'm going to be getting changed. So I want to make sure that I'll be able to get changed out of the wind and, um, and stay warm enough that I can get changed and get my clothes on ready to get back into my car and get home nice and safely. I don't want to be fighting the elements uh, or scrambling down the beach after uh, bits of errant clothing. I want to have a calm, a calm changing environment uh, and one where the wind is kept off of me. I hope you found this video interesting with it giving you a couple of insights into the kind of things I think about before I get in for a swim, whether it's at a new location or one I'm really familiar with. Really, I have a few golden rules that I do for every swim. I let someone know where I'm going and how long I'm going to be. I wear something on my feet and I get out of the water before I think I need to. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like give it a comment, let me know what your golden rules for swimming are and uh, I'd also love you to subscribe to my channel. So click on my face, ding the little bell and you'll know when the next one's out. Have a little look around the channel because there are well over a hundred videos on there all about outdoor swimming and I'll see you next time. Bye!